Right now, all across Montana, thousands of high school students are thinking about where they'll choose to go to college. And their two main in-state options are the University of Montana and Montana State University. Both universities offer a wide range of degrees, programs, and incredible access to the natural beauty of Montana. But in terms of enrollment, the schools are very different. It's no secret that MSU is currently thriving and has seen a steady increase of full-time students for almost a decade. It reported a record high enrollment of nearly 17,000 last fall semester. As we know, UM is a different story. Enrollment here peaked in 2011 at nearly 16,000 students, but has consistently decreased every year since. This fall, UM reported a total enrollment of 11,865, a 25% drop. So are prospective students losing interest in UM? What are the schools doing differently? If you take a look at each school's marketing efforts, MSU spends nearly twice the amount UM spends on recruitment and admissions, 2.2 million compared to our 1.4. But how does that translate into the real world? Looking at each school's online presence, I couldn't find many differences. Their Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter accounts were very similar, but what are the schools doing differently offline? To find out what difference $800,000 makes to the average prospective student, I requested information like any curious high school senior would. Almost instantly, MSU got back to me by emailing me, letting me know they got my information request, and they would process it as soon as possible. I received no such welcome email from UM. In the following weeks, I received many more emails from MSU, but not one from UM. About three weeks after I requested information, I began receiving marketing materials from MSU in my mailbox. What was most impressive to me was a large, well-designed, full-color, 44-page book including every detail about MSU. About three weeks after that, UM sent me their first piece of mail. It was a much smaller booklet and included much less information. MSU kept the mailers coming. It consistently sent me flyers with information about everything on campus, from student life and academic programs, to where I could go attend a meeting with free pizza and learn more about the school. About two months after I requested information, MSU informed me via a larger mailer that I was invited to apply for the Leader's Edge application, which meant I had access to Ramir scholarships and priority financial aid consideration. So after requesting information three and a half months ago, MSU has sent me eight pieces of mail and a dozen emails, and UM has sent me one piece of mail and zero emails. The two schools marketed to me very differently. I found MSU in my mailbox much more than UM, but it's important to remember that these mailers aren't free. I'm sure MSU spends a lot of money sending these to high school seniors, obviously something UM can't afford to do. If I were a high school senior, there's no doubt that MSU would catch my interest over UM. And because MSU consistently kept the mailers and emails coming, I felt like the school really wanted me to attend, something UM's single mailer didn't convey. All this begs the question, are paper mailers a way to a student's heart? Could UM gain an edge over MSU by dropping its snail mail altogether and putting more effort into digital marketing? For the Montana Kaiman, this has been Quinn Corcoran.